Hey everybody, I hope you're all having a great day. In this tutorial series, I'm going to be creating a basic Star Wars movie application from scratch with ExpressJS. ExpressJS is a web framework for Node.js that I've wanted to try out and build some apps with for a while now. And I have to say it is actually really fun to use and easy to learn. And it's also really powerful. In this tutorial, I'm going to be creating a Star Wars themed movie app that displays the posters for the various movies on the homepage. And then on each individual page for the movies, it displays more information about that movie. There's a drop down navigation in the header that links to each of these pages. And you can also click on the posters to be taken to that respective page. In this video, I'm going to walk through what you need to get started with this app and express in general. Then I'm going to go over some of the basic concepts of ExpressJS that'll help you understand the basics of how ExpressJS really works. We will cover modules, routes, templates, and all the other fun stuff of Express. In this part, we will focus mainly on the basics of Express and the routes, home page, and partials. And in the next part, we will focus heavily on the dynamic rendering of the individual pages for each of the movies. And I will then go over how to publish the Express app live on the web with Heroku. Sound cool? Good. Let's dive right in. So the first step of getting started with this app and Express and Node in general is installing Node. You can check if you already have node installed by running the command node dash dash version, and you should see the node version that you have installed. Now, one of the great things about node and express is that it works great on windows and Mac. So I'm obviously running a Mac for this tutorial, but if you're on windows or Linux, you know, don't hesitate to follow along because it works great on those as well. If you do not have node already installed on your computer, you can swing over to your browser to nodejs.org and you can download the mature and dependable version or stable version whichever you really want. I'm using 4.2.2 for this application. So whatever one you want, I usually go with the mature and dependable version. And it's just a basic um, download. So you click on it. Um, you're just going to get a package file, open it up and just follow the instructions. Same thing on Windows. So it's really easy to get installed. And the cool thing is um, when you download Node, you're going to get NPM with it. Now, NPM is the Node Package Manager. It's what we're going to be using to, do, to install Express and other Node modules. So you can check if you have that as well by running npm dash dash version. Um, but again, when you install a node, you're going to get this along with it. So that's great. All right. Now that we have Node.js installed, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder that will house our application. Now I'm going to go into a folder called Express Apps on my desktop to do this. But again, you can do this wherever you want and you can really name the folder anything you want. But just make sure it's a descriptive name. In my case, I'm just going to do Star Wars movie app. All right, now we have the folder name. We're gonna change our directory into the folder we just created. So I'm gonna do desktop express apps, then star wars movie app. And now once we're in here, we're gonna run a command called npm init. Now this command is going to create a package.json file for us. And this package.json file is important because it specifies the dependencies for our application. And dependencies are basically um, it's an object literal that specifies the node modules and their version number that are kind of required for the application to run. And you're also going to get a prompt here in the terminal that specifies sort of meta information or just information about the application. So name, it's Star Wars Movie Apps, okay, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Version 1's okay, description, I'm just going to do a basic, oops, a basic movie app for Star Wars fans. Entry point will be app.js. This is going to be the file that's going to run the application. And a lot of times the convention is to use app.js as the name. So I'm just going to run with that. Test command, we can leave blank. Git repository, we will do that later. Keywords can be blank. Author, you can just put your name here. Ryan Hemrick. Uh, license, that's fine. Is this okay? Yes. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Express Apps folder where that folder will was that we created Star Wars movie app. I'm going to open that in sublime text. Any text editor will do, but it helps have one that you can see the folder structure for. So we'll make that larger and we're going to see a package.json file. Now the things we entered into the command line, we'll see name, version, description, main. We can change these and the changes will be, you know, able to be used, I guess is the word. In the application so what we typed in the command line isn't final but right down here below license is where we're going to have our dependencies object literal when we start installing express and ejs so actually that is the next logical step so now that we're we're inside the star wars movie app folder we're gonna run the command npm install express dash dash save 
Now dash dash save is a flag that's going to save this express node module as a dependency of our application. If we didn't have dash dash save, we'd have to write that you know, manually, but using the flag automatically gets the latest stable version of the node module and it just inserts it in the package.json file for us, which is super convenient. So we're gonna run that command and it's gonna go and fetch. Now, the keywords npm install are used whenever you install a node module and obviously express, the name express is the name of the node module. So this can take a little bit, but voila, we are ready to roll and this will create a node modules folder, which is in the root of our application folder. And inside here, you'll have all the names of the node modules you've installed. In our case, we have express and we'll have EJS later on. And the cool thing with express is all the logic for the framework is in here and we don't need to touch that at all. We can just close up node modules and <laughs> never have to worry about it, which is awesome. So the first logical step here is to create that file that we're going to run called app.js. This is going to go in the root of our folder. We'll create a new file app.js and in node.js we run a command called like node app.js and this is going to run the app.js file. So the logic that creates the express application and runs it is actually done in the app.js file. So we can just delete that and we'll go over here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called express and this is going to require the express module. Now express right here in the single quotes corresponds to the name of the node module here and express basically now has the functionality of the express node module but to actually create the express app we're going to create a variable called app and we're going to run express open parenthesis close parenthesis and semicolon so this right here is going to specify that app is a new express application and the most important thing is that app now has all the methods of express able to be accessed on app so we can run like app.get app.set and all the things we'll see in the future but the reason app is an important variable in this case is because it represents the express application it can really be named anything you want but app seems to be a convention as well so we're rolling with it so one thing i do want to write really quick is just to show you how node um, documents are run so we'll just do a console.log hello bra that, that works why not so when we run the app.js file using the command node app.js node app.js we should see in the console hello bra and there it is so now i'm just going to go back into the sublime text editor delete that because that's really has no no purpose in our application so before we can see sort of web pages being rendered and any sort of text in the browser we need to specify a route just like ruby on rails django and other like web development frameworks we need to specify routes for our application in Express, I actually find this to be very easy to understand and extremely flexible and powerful. So just remember that a route can be thought of as binding some functionality when a user requests a certain address in an application. So to specify routes, we're gonna write a comment just to help separate this code. And this will be the home route. So the home route, we're gonna do app.get. Now remember, app represents an Express application and has all the methods that express has available on it so we're going to do app.get and do slash function it's going to step two parameters request response and we'll close that this get method corresponds to a get request for a route so the first parameter here is the url we are visiting in our case it's going to be the home route which is just a forward slash aka the home page the root route whatever you want to call it the second parameter is a callback function with the request and response parameters. Now, a convention is to shorten request and response to req and res. So just know that req is res is request and res is response. So you can think of a server expects to get requests from the client, and once those requests are received, they the server sends a response back. In our case, response, R-E-S, represents the server's response. So you can think of code, for example, as response.send as the server's response sending information back to the client. So say when we visit the home route forward slash, we're gonna have the server send back something to the web page, And we're just gonna say, this is a server response on the home page. 
All right, so now before we can actually view this in the web browser, we need to um, tell our app to listen on a specific port. So we're gonna do app.listen, and we're gonna specify the first parameter is the port we're gonna listen on. In many cases, people use 3000. Again, you can use whatever you want, but the second parameter is gonna be a function that's gonna run when we're listening. And I'm just gonna log some information to the console. If I could spell, that would be grand. Um, console.log, I'm gonna just say, the application is running on, oops, local host 3000. And now we'll save that. We'll go back to our terminal and we'll run node app.js and we'll see our, the application is running on local host 3000 message. We rotate on over here and we can go to local host 3000. We view that and we're gonna see the response from the server. This is a server response on the home page. Awesome, so that's the basics of routing. We are binding functionality to when a user requests something. So when the user requests the home route, this function is gonna get executed and we're gonna send this response to the page. To help kind of explain this a little bit more, I'm gonna create another one. I'm just gonna do app.get, um, let's just call it Darth. Why not? Because we're cool here. We'll do a function uh, request response and semicolon, and we'll do something similar to this, but just copy that, paste. This is a server response on the Darth page. So got that. So basically when we visit slash Darth, this will be sent to the, to the page. So we're gonna go back, control C to restart the server, run node.js again. We'll refresh and we'll see the homepage one on the homepage. And if we go slash Darth, we will see this is a server response on the Darth page. In our final application, when a user clicks on a movie poster on the home page or a corresponding link in a drop-down navigation menu, they will be taken to a single page for that movie. We will accomplish this by using a parameter in the request. Remember, a request is the client request to the server, which can be you know, in the form of a URL request. The final app's URL for one of these pages follows the pattern of you know, slash Star Wars episode slash then the episode number, for example, Star Wars episode slash two, slash three, slash four, et cetera. Users can pass information in a route to the application. So for example, if we visit um, this one right here, we're obviously not gonna get anything because there's nothing there. This is the default for if a route doesn't exist right away. We can actually pass this number right here as a, as a variable. We can store that and then use it in our application. So the information will be sent um, can be placed in a params variable, and the params variable is accessed on the request object. So remember, we have response and we have request. So we can use this request to access information passed in a URL. So it's actually really powerful and really easy to do, actually. To see this in action, we will create a route that goes to a single page for each movie, and we will dynamically send a response with the episode number that is passed to the request. So because we're not gonna use this, we can actually just delete that right away. And I'm just gonna call this movie single. And I'm gonna write app.get, and the URL is gonna be slash star wars episode slash colon episode number question mark function request response semicolon voila. Okay, so this episode number right here, this we can access this off of the request objects params variable. So we're gonna store that in our own variable called episode number, and it's gonna get request.params.episode number. So the number, again, passed up here, like one, two, three, well, is now getting stored in this variable. And to see how this changes dynamically, let's do a response, not send, and let's just send, um, this is the page for episode plus episode number, which will print out the number. And actually that's all we need. So we'll semicolon, we'll go back and we'll restart the server. So now when we visit this kind of URL, we should see this is the page number for episode then the number up here. So we refresh and see this is the page for episode one, visit two, page for episode two, three, page for episode three. Awesome. You can, act, you can also send um, HTML when you send a response from the server. Um, this really doesn't have too much practical use in our case, 
because we're going to be using templates. But if we go back and we refresh and we go back to the home page, we can see that this is obviously looking a lot different because it's rendering the HTML. One more route I want to create is for something that doesn't exist. So for example, we visit slash about or um, in the future application, um, we only want routes for episodes one to six to appear. So they visit like eight or nine. We also want something to happen instead of that just cannot get and the route name. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call this not found. And we're going to do app.get. And if you get any route, which is represented by an asterisk, asterisks, whatever, <laughs> I can't even say it, request response. We're going to close that. We're just going to do response.send, response.send. And we're just going to say, you know, this is not the page that you are looking for. So we can go back, we can restart the server. And now this is kind of important. This kind of follows a sequential order. So the home route will run if they visit the home route. This function will run if they visit the home route. This function will run if they visit a URL like this. And this will run if they visit any other page. But if we put this at the top, this would actually take precedence over every other route. So we're going to go here. We're going to do slash about because it doesn't exist. And you're going to see this is not the page that you are looking for. Awesome. This is actually where we're going to render kind of a 404 kind of template like, oh, sorry, page is not found, something like that. So this is something you see a lot in production environments. And it's something that Express.js makes very easy to do because with a static site, you'd have to type in, you'd have to do it for every, you know, almost conceivable route. So Express makes this very easy and it's a very powerful thing of Express. Another thing that Express also makes really easy is writing templates. So when writing our HTML templates for the application, Express.js uses a templating engine that allows us to write embedded JavaScript in our code. These are called EJS files. You can also use Jade, but for the sake of a beginner application and sort of learning it a little bit better, um, I prefer EJS, but you can use Jade, it's up to you. Templating in Express.js using EJS is very important because it allows us to achieve a lot of this functionality really quickly and it allows us to use a template file that can represent a ton of different HTML files. So instead of running it, writing a separate file for everything, we can just write one template file for obviously a similar group of web pages and it will execute and be dynamic depending on the information we pass in. All right, so the first step of using Express um, or EJS is actually installing it. So we're gonna go into the terminal. We're gonna run npm install ejs-save. So just like Express, this is gonna save it as a dependency and it's gonna be placed in the node modules folder. That's much quicker because it's smaller. And we're gonna go into no modules and we'll see EJS. Awesome. Now that we have EJS, we actually need to specify the view engine because if we render an EJS file, we didn't set the view engine to EJS, we will get an error. So to do that, we're just gonna go um, up here and we'll do um, app.set, again, an express method. And we're gonna set the view engine to EJS and we'll save that. Now in order to house our views, we're gonna go into the root of our application, create a new folder and we're gonna call it views. If I could really spell, that'd be great. And inside this views folder, we're gonna create our EJS files. So the first one we're gonna create is home.ejs. And right now inside here, um, actually we need to, sometimes they don't, uh, text editors don't recognize EJS. So HTML works fine, because that's basically what it is, just HTML with some embedded JavaScript. And we're just gonna write this is the template for the home page. Now you're probably thinking, uh, how are we rendering this? Well, we're not right now. So what we're gonna do, because this is the home template, inside the home route, we're gonna do, instead of response.send, we're gonna do response.render. And we're gonna render inside here, the home template. Now, um, by default, Express will look in the views directory for your templates. So we actually don't have to specify the URL slash views or anything. And we don't even need to specify the EJS extension. We just need to specify res dot render home. So let's go back to our terminal. Oops, I did not want to do that. If you do that by accident, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to overwrite what you had. So we can run node app.js. And we go back in here. And we don't obviously have an about page, but we'll see this is the template for the home page on the home route. So when we visit here, it's rendering the home route. 
And if we were to visit um, Star Wars episode, oops, episode four, oops, Star Wars episode slash four, I am struggling. We're going to see this is a page for episode four. We're not seeing the home template because we're not rendering it in that route. One of the most powerful things with Express is the ability to pass information to a template. So for example, when we're rendering the home template, we can pass an object literal that can contain a bunch of name value pairs that we can then access in the EJS template. For example, let's pass a variable called title and it's just going to say um, Star Wars movies for the home page. And if we go over to home here, we can do, so we want to do like a paragraph that just says uh, the title. So to actually outport, outport, oh gosh, output something, we can just do bracket parentheses equal two spaces parentheses bracket, and we can just do title. Now, oops, title. Now this looks a lot like Ruby on Rails because it is. Um, the equal sign denotes that we want to output something. And if we don't have this, it's just going to execute it. But because we want to see the title on the page, we want to have that equal sign. Go back here, run node.app.js again, and we should see Star Wars movies on the home page, along with that template h1 tag. And there we go. So we're outputting a value that we're passing in from our route. Passing in information from our route is something that we're going to be doing a good bit in this application. And thankfully, Express makes this very easy to do, especially with a JSON file. A very common thing to do in an application is to loop through data. For example, on our home page, we're looping through the movie poster images. Um, instead of hard coding each and every item in a list on multiple web pages, which can get excessively tedious, um, we can just use embedded JavaScript to loop through an array and you know output that information. To help provide an example of this, since we're going to be doing this um, in our application, we can do movies. Um, we're going to pass in an array. We can just do the first movie, the, oops, that should be a comma, the second movie, and the third one will be obviously the third movie. Now we're going to be obviously getting an array from our movies.json file later on, but this is kind of similar. Obviously it's a lot easier, but to show an example, we'll have an unordered list and let's export each movie as a list item. So we can just use bracket percentage, percentage bracket. And I'm just actually going to copy this down here as well because we'll have to close it. So we're just going to use a simple for loop to loop through the um, array, the movies array. And remember, we have movies available in our home template because when we're rendering the home template, we have this movies uh, variable accessible. So we'll do for, uh, oops, var i gets zero, i is less than, movies.length i plus plus and we'll create an open curly brace and we'll close it down here and since we're looping through the array of movies for each one we're going to output um, the value so um, we're looping through the movies array and then each list item is going to be um, the array index that is i of the movies array so it'll be easier once i just <laughs> just show it so we'll go node app.js and we'll refresh and we should see the three. Oops, I made a mistake. And because I didn't actually specify that I'm outputting it, that was a, a rookie mistake. So we'll go back and we'll restart the server. Again, I'm basically using this embedded JavaScript handle here with the equal tag to um, say that we want to output it to the screen and go back here. And now we'll see the first movie the second movie and the third movie. So it's getting kind of tedious looking at this uh, very weak uh, styling, but just the bare minimum. So we're gonna add bootstrap right now and we're gonna um, sort of extract certain things in a generic HTML template so that we can easily make changes and you know not have to repeat ourselves a million times. So let's just go to get bootstrap and get, oh wow, the spelling is, the spelling is real get bootstrap. And what I like to do is go to get started, getting started. And we can scroll down to the basic template. I'm just going to copy the basic template. And we're going to go back, just delete all that, paste that in. And for some reason, I like to have my head and body on the, like the very first indentation. So I don't know, maybe I'm weird. But 
Let's get rid of some of the comments here just to make it less intense. So we'll get rid of that. And we're going to use jQuery, the CDN, so we can actually leave that there. That'd be good. All right. So we have a really bare minimum right now. And one thing we're going to do in the future is we're going to take this stuff in here. We're going to extract that into a partial. And we're going to take our script tags and extract that into a partial. But since we're actually going to use some bootstrap styling in like the final application, let's get the CDNs so we don't have to install things locally. Get the style sheet. Go back over here and we'll link to that. And then we'll get the JavaScript script tag. And we'll link that below the jQuery. Cool. And now if we go back here and we run the app, we should see the bootstrap styling, the amazing bootstrapness. Hello world. Hello. All right. So one thing we can actually do is since we're passing in that title variable, let's just output that as our title because that's what it's there for. And we go back to app.js. We don't need the movies anymore. Refresh. Since we made changes to our logic, node app.js. Refresh, we'll see Star Wars movies up here, and we still got the bootstrap styling. Awesome. So as I was saying a lot with partials, let's actually go ahead and extract the scripts and the stuff in the head into partials. So to do that in the views folder, we're gonna create another folder called partials. And in the partials folder, right now we're gonna create two partials. One's gonna be head.ejs, and the other one, is going to be called scripts.ejs. So head.ejs is obviously going to take the stuff in the head here. So we'll just cut that and we'll paste it. And I'm going to fix the indentations because I'm OCD. And we'll go and we'll grab the script stuff. Yay, hello. And we'll paste this in. All right, this is the dream here. Okay, so. <laughs> Now that we have those two in their own partials in the partials folder, we can just use a handlebar tag here and include them. So we're just going to do the keyword include, and then we're going to do partials slash head ejs. I'm going to do something very similar for scripts. Paste that. Let's create a lot of space here. I don't, I'm addicted to addicted to white space, so I have a problem. Okay, so we're going to do include. And then we're specifying the, the route to it. So partials slash scripts.ejs because home, the template file is in the same directory as partials. We just need to say partials slash the file name. And if we go back here, we will still see our bootstrap styling. Hello world. Okay. One thing I want to do right before we start diving more into the logic is I'm going to create a couple more folders here and I'll go over um, sort of what they're used for and why. Um, we're including them. So one folder in the root is called public, and this is where our static um, assets are going to go images, style sheets, and JavaScripts. So we can do a new folder images. And we'll also create a new one called style sheets. And another one called Java scripts. Now we're going to be including our images for this application in images, and we'll create a Actually, let's just do that right now. I don't want to clutter this when we're actually starting to work with the logic of the application with creating files and stuff. So styles.css in the style sheets folder. And again, we're not going to put anything in it right now, but we have it. And the last folder we want to create is called routes. And I bet you know what that means. This is <laughs> this is housing the routes. So we're going to do index.js, which is going to represent the routes and stuff. We'll get to why we're extracting the routes, but it'll be it'll be pretty easy to follow and Express makes everything really easy. Okay, so to get the movies.json file so you guys don't have to copy that ridiculous amount of code, just go into the um, GitHub repository. I'll have a link in the description below and you can click on movies.json here and just click at the top, actually click at the bottom. For some reason, you can't copy from the top, at least for me. Take this, copy it, kaboom, you're good. And another thing you can obviously do if you want is you can download the zip right here and you'll have the zip because you're going to be using the images um, as well. All right. So once we have the movies.json file ready, you can see that we have an array called movies that's made up of objects. Now, each of the objects in the movies array represents a single movie and they all have the same number of name value pairs. Um, each movie has several properties such as title, episode number, an array of main characters and some other stuff. 
Each of these objects follows the object literal notation, which is a name and a value. In our application, we're going to be able to access using like dot notation, like um, movie dot description, movie dot poster, movie dot title. And we can access this value by this name right here. Now, one thing you're probably going to see a lot of if you work with um, generators such as the express generator, they're going to see a, a folder structure similar to what we created. Now, the reason I chose not to use one is because there's a lot of stuff in there that's really kind of confusing. And for the purpose of the basic tutorial, I feel like starting from scratch really helps um, you understand why things exist. Now, a lot of the logic for our application will be done inside the the function here for our route. So like when we visit a route, we want to execute some code. Now that's the reason we created this index.js file because we want to extract this function, this this logic here into its own file. So we want to export the routing functionality so that we can still access it in app.js. To do this, we will export the function that accepts the request and the response for each of the routes. So I'm going to copy these three. We're going to go into index. And what I'm going to do is we're going to take this out right here. I'm going to do exports dot the name of the route. So I'm going to call this one home equals and remember to get rid of this extra parenthesis. And I'm going to copy this because we're going to do the same thing down here. This is going to be exports dot movie single. And this one is going to be called exports dot let's just call it not found. All right. So oh, okay, get rid of that and get rid of this one. These, print, these extra parentheses, don't forget to get rid of those. So what this is doing is it's exporting this functionality as movie single, as home, and as not found, respectively. So what we can do is we can go into app.js, and we can get rid of this, and then we can access that function by the name here. But before we do that, we need to tell our app.js file to access the routes file. So to do that, we're going to do var routes gets require then we're going to do in parentheses and single quotes dot slash routes so this is going to look into our routes folder and get all the routes we have in the routes folder and put it in a variable called routes so in app.get the home route we're going to do routes then the name of that route which was home we're going to do that and then down here we're going to do the same thing but it's going to be routes dot movie oops single and down here, it's going to be routes dot not found. There we go. So as you can see, it really clears up a lot of what's going on in app.js. And we, we still have all this logic here in index.js. So just to make sure that everything is still working and we didn't break anything, we can run node.app.js again. And we refresh. We'll still see hello world. What's it? There we go. And we can visit Star Wars Episode 1, Patreon Episode 1. And about, we'll see, this is not the page you are looking for. Cool, everything is working. Okay, so if you don't have the images already, you can go to the GitHub repository. I'll put a link in the description below. And the easiest way to get all the images would just be click right here, download zip, download the zip file, unzip it, and then in public images on your local computer, you'll have all of these images. Just as a little disclaimer, I actually don't own these images. They all belong to their respective owners. I'm just using them to provide a better learning experience and to actually be themed to the Star Wars app that I'm building. So just a little disclaimer, they all belong to their respective owners. I'm just using them for the purpose of, you know, a better learning experience. So yeah. All right, so now we have all of these images in our public images directory. We now have all the assets we need from the GitHub repository so we can start focusing more on actually building the application. Let's begin by looping through the movie posters that are now in our public images directory and displaying them on the home.ejs template. So if we look at the movies.json file, the image of the poster for each of the movies has the name of the poster and a value that corresponds to the image name in the public images directory. Before we can do anything with name value pairs in the JSON file, we first need to require it so that we can access all this code here in the JSON file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our routes file because we're going to do all this logic or the majority of the logic right here in this function for all the routes. So at the very top, we're going to do var movies JSON. This could be anything you want, but I think movies JSON's pretty descriptive. And we're going to require 
require and we're going to go up a directory because we're in the roots directory and we're going to do movies.json. So now this movies.json variable we have access to in the routes and it represents this file. So we can now use this movies.json variable to access the name the names in the movies.json to get the values. Because we're going to be displaying the poster for each movie on the home page, we first need to create a variable that represents the array of movies here. So inside the home uh, route, up here, we're going to do var movies gets movies json dot movies. So what this is doing is it's getting the movies array here and it's storing it in a movies variable. So now what we want to do is we want to go and we want to pass that in. Like we're passing title in, we're passing Star Wars movies and we can access that by title. We're going to pass in movies as movies. Now, this variable on the left is what we're going to be accessing in our EJS. And this one right here actually corresponds to the variable in the function. Awesome. So let's go into our home EJS template. And because the movies variable represents the array of movie objects, we can use a for loop to loop through the array of movies and get each movie's poster and output it. To start, we will loop through the movies as long as i is less than movies.length. So let's just let's give it a hello world here. Not needed. So we'll do for var i gets zero. When i is less than movies.length, remember we have access to movies which is an array, we're going to increment i, this is just a basic for loop. And we will close that. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to then export an image. And the source is going to be, oops, slash images slash, and then we're going to output the poster name in here poster name for each of the movies. Now each instance of movie we can access by doing movies i so that's going to get each current instance or current object of movie. So the first time through, it'll be this object. Second time, it'll be this object. And we're going to just access via dot notation the poster name on that. So right here, we're going to have the URL of slash images slash, for example, the first one, Star Wars Episode 1 poster. Second one will be Star Wars Episode 2 poster and so on. One thing I just realized in the movies.json file that you guys are going to download, this will be fine and you guys don't have to do this but the hero images are actually JPEGs instead of PNGs. But like I said, the one you guys are gonna get from the GitHub repository and the one I'm gonna to link to will already have this fixed so you guys don't have to worry about this. Just a, just a rookie mistake on my part. Oops, so JPEG. One thing you might realize is the um, URL address here. Because we're in the views folder, you might be wondering how we're accessing images just right away. The thing is, um, we need to actually go into app.js, and one thing we forgot to add is we need to specify the um, the directory of our static assets. So what we are going to do is we first need to require a module called path. So we'll do var path gets require path, and then we're going to write this line of code. It's going to be app.use, and we're going to do express dot static and then we're gonna do path dot join then we're gonna do a couple underscores dir name comma public so all you really need to know for what this is doing is it's telling express that the static assets are in the public path directory okay now the reason we're doing this is because um if you tried to access the image um you wouldn't be able to um get it initially with the URL we set. So now um, it, the app will automatically look in the public directories for all static assets, style sheets, images, everything. So it just saves time writing um, slash public or you know going up directories and all that fun stuff. So once again, if we look back in home.ejs, we're gonna add a class here as well called image responsive. This is a bootstrap class that will be very useful <laughs> later on when we're trying to uh, get some of the styles here. But this is going to loop through the array of movies that we passed in. Remember, in index.js, movies gets movies, which is represented by the movies array in the movies JSON file. And for each one, we're going to output the poster name, which is in the public images directory. OK, so now if we go back into our terminal and we restart the server and run node app.js again, go into our browser and we refresh, we're going to see these six 
images for our posters. Now they're obviously all different sizes right now, and which we'll fix with CSS. If we inspect the elements, we're gonna see that it's getting slash images. And remember, if we go back here um, in app.js, we're setting the public stat, like the static assets directory as public automatically. So this will automatically search in public and it's getting Star Wars episode one dot poster or poster PNG and it does that for all of them. Awesome. So again, if we look at our movies.json, we will see that those names correspond here. To help you better understand um, how information can be passed to a template, I'll quickly show you another way that you could have accessed the movie posters for each movie. Instead of just passing like we're doing over here, creating the movies variable and then in the um, actual template using dot notation to get the poster on each movie, um, we could just we could have just send the poster as a name value pair to the template. However, I find this to be a little more tedious, especially when we write a lot of logic in here. What I mean by this is I could have did var movie posters and I could have um, created that as an empty array. And then I could have created a for loop. You're starting to see why I find this to be um, a little tedious, but you know, if you prefer to um, put all your logic in here and simplify your template files, then this could work for you. So movies dot, as long as it's uh, less than movies dot length, go to increment I. The reason I find this to be a little cumbersome is because we already have movies defined um, and we can use that to get the posters by just one simple dot notation. But, um, there'd be really be no point of using it again if we already have it defined, but nevertheless, what we can do is then we can do movie posters equals movie posters dot concat. And then we're going to do movies. I dot poster. So what this is doing is it's um, concatenating the movie poster name for each movie in the movies array. And it's concatenating it to the movie posters array. So what we could have did then is we could go, um, back into our home template and when it's less than movie, you know, posters dot length, we could just um, output movie posters. I, which, so this will do the same thing. It looks a little cleaner in the template file, but the route file suffers immensely. So we refresh and we have an error move. Oh, little typo movie posters. That is my bad. And we'll go back refresh and we have another one. What's Oh, one thing I forgot to do, obviously you guys are probably yelling at me. Um, you have to pass it in obviously. So good learning point. I, I created the movie posters array, but the template has no idea that it's available because we're not passing it in. So we're just going to do movie posters, movie posters. It's just destiny. We don't do it this way, I suppose. So we refresh again and we're getting some stuff here. What is wrong now? Let's have a look. Debugging the best learning experience. So something's something's up. Movie posters I. So why is this not working? Oh, I found another another error. Jeez. It's uh movies I dot poster. Again, if we go back and restart and we refresh, there it is. But as you can see, um it's a lot more code here in the route, but it does simplify it a little bit over here. But just for you know personal preference, I'm just gonna go back to what it was. Um, we're gonna loop through movies.length, then we're gonna do the instance of movie and get poster on that. So if we go back now to index.js, we'll not pass in movie posters, and we can just get rid of that as well. We'll save, refresh, make sure I didn't break anything again, and voila, we're we're okay. Okay, so right now the app looks pretty weak sauce. So let's add that large hero image that we see in the final app and give the images some very basic layout styles. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the GitHub page and we're gonna get the styles.css file, or at least the content in it because we already created the file. Okay, so to get the styles.css file, you can visit the GitHub repository. I'll put a link in the description unless you have it open because you might've been there earlier, but we can go into public style sheets, styles.css, and then you can just copy this whole thing. I think it's like 400 lines, 500, 512, look at that. Okay, and then you start at the bottom, just copy the whole thing for some reason. I don't know why. I cannot start copying at the top. Maybe I'm crazy, but they just, yeah, command C, control C. But if I do up here, it just like stops. 
Oh, no, no, it doesn't. I stand corrected. But yeah, just <laughs> just copy the uh, style sheet and then paste it in to the styles.css file in your code editor. All right, so once you have that copied to your clipboard, we'll paste it into the styles.css file. And now what we're going to do is in the home.egs template up here right below the body, we're going to create a div with an ID of hero image. This is going to get a lot of those styles that are custom. And then inside there, I'm going to do an H1 with an ID of hero title. Now this is going to be the title that we're passing in. This is going to become a little bit more um, cumbersome later on in the movie single where each template is going to have a different title. But in this case, we're just hard, hard coding as Star Wars movies. So we'll just output in here the title and we go back here, we'll restart, and we go back to the browser. We will see um, nothing. Do you know why? I don't. Oh, I know, duh. Because we haven't even linked to our style sheet yet. So we go into head. Remember, we have that as a partial file. And we go in here, and let's make this HTML so we don't have to write this without any assistance. And okay, come on, there we go. Link. Okay, so to access our custom style sheet, what we need to do to the href is just gonna be slash style sheets. Remember, we specified our static directory as public, so we don't need to specify that or go up or down any directories. And we can just do style sheets slash styles.css. Awesome. So we can get rid of that. That's the last thing we're gonna to add to the head. Actually, no, it's not, because we still need to add our Google fonts. But if we restart the server and come back, we're gonna see this um, nice little hero image. So right before I go over the styles really quick, let's go to Google Fonts, and we're gonna get the Google Font we're gonna use for this application. We're just gonna use one font, um, Montserrat, I don't even know how to say it, to be honest, but I've been using it a lot with a lot of um, personal projects. So we'll just go to use, um, I don't know if I use bold, I might just to be safe. We'll copy that, we can get rid of it and go back into the head and I open up scripts. I am losing it and we're going to post post. Oh my Lord. We're going to paste that right above and we're going to get rid of the um, partials. We uh, restart the server once again, head back over and we'll see a little bit of nicer font in my eyes. I don't know. You may, you may not think so, but we're going to go back and let's go over the styles we did really quick. I don't want to spend too much time, going over every style I did. This is just a quick little overview if you guys are wondering why I did what I did. So in the body, we're specifying the font, the font weight, and the color. And I have a class on a lot of the, uh, on actually a couple, I think it's the movie single, I have it. It's a content padding class, just adds padding left and padding right. But the hero image, I'm just specifying a fixed width, um, 100%, uh, height, 550 pixels, background color, for some reason if the image doesn't come through. And the background image, um, I'm specifying as because this is a the home page, it's not being set dynamically on the movie single templates will actually set the if you look in movies.json, the hero image has its own image. So we'll do it, we'll do that dynamically in the next part. But this I'm just accessing the images and the Death Star image. Background size of cover, no repeat, uh, position relative. I'm doing that because I'm adding a little um black overlay to the image. If we look here, it's a little darker than it is naturally. That's just so the header will uh, show up a little bit better. And then the hero title, just positioning absolute right in the middle along the bottom. And I'm just giving it some styles here. So with the hero image style, let's actually add a little bit of styling now to the posters. So what we're going to do is above this loop where we're looping through the pictures, we're going to add a div with the ID of posters wrapper. This is just going to add some margins and stuff. And we're also going to add a class on this of content padding, the one I just went over. It's going to add that spacing, content padding. And then we're going to add a clear fix because we're floating these, the posters. And each time through the loop, this is obviously is going in here. So just cut and paste that, fix the spacing. And because I'm addicted to white space, I'm going to do all this. Okay. And then each, um, because we're going to be adding a overlay. When you hover over the poster, you'll see an overlay. Um, inside of the for loop, each time the image is created, it's going to also create a div 
with a class of poster. So we're adding a lot of classes to this poster div. So we'll add that in, indent the images, go back, restart the server, and we're now gonna see a three column layout for our posters. Awesome. Now they're not links yet, which they will be later, but we will get to that in the second part. And if we check out the styles for the posters, I'll go over them really quick. That's the navigation, we'll do that next. Uh, posters wrapper, we have a padding top, 75 pixels right here. Um, each one has a width of 30% and a margin right of four. Um, display inline block, relative, uh, relative because the overlay is positioned absolute once we get to that. And yeah, pretty basic stuff. Okay, so there's two more things I wanna do in this first part. We're gonna create the navigation, which is gonna be basically all HTML right now. We're gonna add the embedded JavaScript in the next part where we loop through and link to the respective uh, movie single pages. But this first part is mainly about the home page. So the next part will be a lot more heavy on the logic for our application and writing the embedded JavaScript. But right now, oh, excuse me, we're gonna create the header.ejs partial file. Okay, so in our header partial, we're gonna create a nav element with a class of navbar, navbar fixed top. These bootstrap classes can tend to get a little tedious. So I'm sorry about this. We're gonna do a div then the class of content padding. They just make the navigation so convenient. So then we're gonna do an unordered list inside the content padding, the class of nav, nav bar, nav. These classes are getting to me, nav bar right. And inside here, we're gonna specify the links we want in our navigation. And we had the home and the movies link. So we're gonna do a list item, href of forward slash, which will take us to the home route. And the other one is going to be movies. So we're going to do, uh, let's see, this is actually going to have a class of drop down because it's a drop down. And inside here, um, do a pound sign. And this is going to have a class of drop down toggle. It's also going to have a data toggle. This is going to, once we click on movies, it'll actually fire the uh, drop down menu. And it's going to fire. Uh, drop down and inside here we're just going to do movies and then we're actually going to do a font awesome class it's going to have a class it's an i element with a class of fa fa chevron down we'll actually add that right after we uh, get this done here and then we're going to add an unordered list after the list item with a class of drop down menu and inside here we're going to do a little for loop. So for var i gets zero when i is less than movies.length. Remember, we're rendering this, we're gonna render this on our home template. And inside our home route, we have access to the movies array, which is represented here, movies array. And we're gonna increment i each time through, create a curly brace, and we'll close that up. And then inside, we're gonna create a list item each time through and it's gonna have an anchor and we'll use a placeholder thing right now because we don't have the movie single template set up. What we're gonna do is we're also gonna add a class episode link and then inside we're gonna output each time through movies with the current index and we're gonna get the title because we wanna loop through the title of each movie and remember movies I will represent each object so right here to here will be the first time through. Then this object will be the second time through. And we're going to get the title name every time through. So the first time we'll get this. Second time we'll get this. And again, we could have done this. Um, all this logic here in index.js, like movie title, created an array, then concatenated it, like I showed earlier. But again, I think it's just easier to use that little dot notation here at the end. It just makes it a lot easier in the end. So if we go back here, and we run the application and we refresh. We're not gonna see anything right now. The reason we're not seeing anything is because we actually haven't included this partial. So if we go into the home uh, template here, we can go include partials header.ejs. And actually right before we refresh again, we can go to font awesome, getting started and copy the CDN and we're gonna paste that in the head partial file. So head right above our custom style sheet, paste that. 
and we'll refresh or restart our server, run node app.js again, refresh, and there is our navigation. And I'd had one class wrong here. Oops, and I have found my mistake. This list item right here, uh, the one with the class that dropped down, actually doesn't close until right here, because this is actually a child of the list item. That is my bad. My bad. Now, if we go back and we refresh, we will finally have our working navigation. Awesome. Now, just to quickly run over the navigation styles, if we run into our, I don't think I have it open. I do not. Styles.css, and we go up here. A lot of these styles are just overriding um, the bootstrap ones. So, navbar fix top, we're giving it a little bit of padding of 10 pixels. Um, the anchors are white, uppercase, a little bit of font spacing. And then um, when we hover over these, you're going to get, you can see this little yellow color that appears. I did that to kind of mirror this, but you hover over the links and you'll get this transitioning yellow color. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, the first child, uh, we're setting some margins here, like 25 pixels between these two, gives it a little bit more space than it does by default. Um, these next ones, like when you hover or you focus, I think Bootstrap's default is gray, but I want it to be transparent. And then this last one here, the drop down menu has an opas, opaque, transparent, slightly transparent black background. And the last thing we're going to do in this part is we're going to add the content for the poster overlay. So we're going to go into, we can close the header actually. We're going to go into home.ejs. And currently we're only displaying the posters for each movie. However, we want to do a little bit more. When a user hovers over the poster, we want to display the movie's official title and a little bit of more information. The thing says view more with a little arrow. So when we hover over this, we want that stuff to appear. So let's go ahead and actually add this. So inside the div um, with the class of poster, we're going to add another div, create some space. And it's going to have a class. This is going to wrap the overlay content. It's going to be poster info overlay. Now we're going to create some space there. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an H3. And since we have movies, we're in the loop still. So each instance, so we're going to do output. We're going to do movies I, which is the current movie object. So it'll be this current movie object, then this current movie object, and so on. Dot title. And we're going to do an H4, which is just going to say view more. And then we're going to have another little font awesome class of FA, FA arrow right. And if we go back and restart our server, run node JS again, and we refresh, we're going to see that when we hover, we're going to get this nice little overlay that has the title of the movie. So here's number four, A New Hope. Five, Empire Strikes Back, two, Attack of the Clones, and looking good. So we are going to add um, anchors around these a little bit later, but we don't have the template set up for the movie single. So this will actually would change to a uh, pointer cursor, but um, we'll get to that. And quickly going over the styles for this, um, poster wrapper, actually we already did that right here. Um, the info overlay by default has a zero opacity, which means it's hidden and we're positioning it absolutely. And the reason um, we're positioning this absolutely is because the poster which is apparent is positioned uh, relative. So it's gonna be positioned um, absolute relative to the poster. That doesn't make a ton of sense, I'm sorry. But we're adding a little bit of padding to it. And the transition here of 0.5 seconds is when we hover, it kind of comes in in half a second. I think it's a little, little bit smooth, looks pretty good. And then the H3 and the H4 just given some font uh, styles. So in the current state of our application, we have looped through the movie objects in the movies JSON file and outputted the poster for each movie. And we do that right here. We're looping through movies and we're outputting the movie poster. And remember, um, in our index.js file, in our routes folder, we have access to movies because we're requiring the JSON file. And then we're getting the movies array off of that JSON file. And then we're passing it in when we render the template. We also create a basic navigation, which is our header.ejs partial. We create the necessary directories for our application. And in the next video, we will continue to build out the functionality for the movie single route. And this is where the real fun actually begins in this application. This is where we start to see the real power of Express.js. We will also create functional links on the movie posters and the navigation taking you to um, the respective pages. And we'll also create a 404 template that renders when people visit a page we don't want them to. So hope you guys enjoyed this part and I'll see you in the next one.